Escape the Matrix 5, same events hold a different meaning from the physical, or from the spirit side. Hello again. I'm Marie Swaru. Thank you for being here with me today once more. There is a common factor that appears in a lot of the data that comes to us describing the other side, the so-called spirit world, and it is that the value and the meaning of an experience in the physical side is different than when the same soul interprets that had experience once it is on the spirit side. It is clearly noticed that any unwanted, dramatic, and even traumatic experience a person has had on the physical side, does not hold the same meaning, does not hold the same interpretation, nor does it have the same emotional value once the person has crossed over. Something horrible and traumatic in the side of the living, is seen as something great and very nurturing to the person's soul, once it has crossed over. And that goes for all what has been experienced while in the world of the living, and quite frankly, that is not only very disturbing, but quite worrisome as well. When there is a positive and very beautiful event happening while someone is on the physical world, it will continue to be appreciated and taken as something positive once the person has crossed over. So basically, once in the spirit world, positive experiences continue to be taken as positive, but negative experiences are transformed into positive ones, or the interpretation of them is what changes. But then again, it depends on the point of view and of the value of each person, each soul gives to said experiences occurring on the physical side, so it cannot, or should not be generalized yet all the data points in that direction, and there is quite a lot of it. And in this case, for what it is worth, I am talking from a personal and experienced memory point of view, as I do hold clear recollections, not only of past lives, but also of how it is like to be in between lives as well, in the spirit world, although that last part is much shadier than my memories of past lives. But not only talking from a personal point of view, because anyone on earth can also research this subject on their own, and most probably come to the same conclusions I have found. For example, researching the valuable work of Dolores Cannon, or the work of Rowney Lena Kilder where this point comes up all the time. And as a footnote, they both have crossed to the other side. The first thing that is worrisome about this change of values, and of meaning of all experiences had on the physical side, is that it makes us think that whatever we decide while in the world of the living, may hold absolutely no value at all once we cross to the spirit side. Almost as if we did not matter at all, and neither do our wishes, our most cherished values and our suffering. So, should we decide while in the world of the living that this is our last incarnation, may not mean anything once we've come to pass, with it sentencing us to another incarnation in the physical, and yet another and another, where we most probably would be wishing the present one to be our last. We can only theorize to why this occurs, but what I conclude is that when we pass over, our consciousness expands so much that our interpretation of the events that occurred while alive changes dramatically. That would mean two things, that said expansion of consciousness causes us to stop being who we were while among the living, and that all the negative events we experience while alive, and all our suffering, is nothing more than an illusion, and any unwanted event is only seen in a dramatic, suffering way while experiencing it through the lens of the physical body. An example of this, is the following, this one is taken from a Dolores Cannon extract, and I'm only using it for it to be researchable for those of you who would like to take this subject even further on your own, but I cannot tell you where it is exactly as I'm writing only from memory, and I honestly don't recall where it is within all her works and articles. A female construction contractor, in Iraq during the war, was traveling in an armed convoy that was hit by an improvised explosive device, many there were killed, but after having a strong near-death experience, she survived, but she lost an arm.
She remembers clearly that when she was on the other side, she found herself talking to what she interprets to be one of her spirit guides. And she remembers being totally happy and fascinated about being able to go back into the physical world, and having the opportunity to experience what it is like to go through the rest of her life without an arm. Another example, this one from Dolores Cannon, is that people who are terrible enemies while alive, turn out to be the best of friends once they've crossed over to the spirit world, because there they know life in the physical is just a game. And as a personal example, I remember I was rock climbing for sport in one of my past lives, and I remember getting trapped in a place far above in the rocks, and on the face of a mountain where I could not go any further up, and I could not go down retracing my steps either. So I was forced to make a move, no matter what, and I jumped to grab a rock to one side of me, a rock that once I was hanging from it, started to break loose from the mountainside. I remember the terror I felt when I realized my mistake, and that I had no chance to save myself, all in a few fraction of a second, I felt a deep sadness knowing I was going to die. I remember falling, still hopelessly holding on to the rock that was falling with me, and I remember the feeling of uselessness of that sport, and repenting taking it as a pastime, as well as the anger I felt against myself. All that in the few moments it took me to reach the ground and die. But then, once on the other side, my thoughts were about the awesomeness of the ride, and of all the experience I had gained from that fall, and the experimental knowledge necessary to value life from that new angle, I was basically euphoric about what had just happened. I remember that all what my short lifetime that had just ended taught me was always of a positive nature, leaving a satisfactory and happy feeling, including everything that when alive I had felt to have been negative, and unwanted experiences. Except, perhaps the realization that I had to go back in again, to finish all what I had left undone, but it was more of a feeling of that being a nuisance and a waste of time, although of course time does not behave the same while on the other side, but that was my feeling. Justin, oh no, I must do all that again. The point is that even though we may not want to reincarnate again while we are alive, we may very well want to once we've crossed over. Then some questions arise, for example, why we don't, or wouldn't want to have another experience in the physical. And the answer may be because we associate the physical world with suffering, but only while we are alive. But when we are in the spirit side, we see an incarnation with all the good and bad events, as one whole awesome experience we want to repeat, or to have another. Being that as far as I can remember and as far as I have also researched, it is very peaceful in the spirit world and that is great and that is what we may want while alive, but from there it looks like what we desire is more action. Another factor is that when we are in the spirit world we are perfectly conscious that an incarnation in the physical is only of a very temporal nature, that we do not lose our identity and that there is nothing that can ever happen to us in the world of the living that can truly harm us. While we are alive we may see everything in a strong emotional and dramatic way, but when we cross over we see an entire incarnation as just a ride, and just one more of many we've had and we will have. With this, leaving the desire to not incarnate anymore, as only an insignificant side effect of experiencing pain, especially emotional pain, while we are in the world of the living, something we expect and we disregard as not having much importance once we are in the spirit world, as it is only part of the experience and a consequence of having a body. Looking at the problem from another angle, what does the next concept tell us? That there is nothing in the material world that we take with ourselves once we cross over into the spirit world, we cannot take our money, our art collection, or car, our house, nor any of our material possessions. The only thing that we do take with ourselves when we die is our experience, or what we've learned through our lifetime, 
and all the spiritual growth we could achieve. What does this mean? It means that nothing in the material world has any value in itself, from the point of view of a life experience a soul is having, except for the experimental value the material object can give the soul. And if we add this last concept to another one, to the fact that if you accumulate too much of anything, some things more than others of course, the things will start to own you, and not you them. This because you must sacrifice much of your life in order to tend to the needs of the things you own, and with it, acting in detriment to your life experience. All this would mean that what really matters during a lifetime is the experience we accumulate, and not the material things we can uselessly pile up, being this last thing a symptom of identifying too much with having and not with being, thinking that the material world is all what matters, because it is all there is. So, as I see things, what really matters, is self-improvement, and in every possible manner, but especially spiritual growth, where who we are inside, our values and our ethics, and our actions are far more important than what, and how many things we own during a lifetime. I'm not saying we must neglect our need to own things, because as I said above they do give us experimental value that nurtures our spiritual growth as well although this would depend on the needs and wants of each individual during its life experience, but things do have their place. But we do need to watch them so they don't take over our lives. As a meaning to life, I'd say it is to realize we are the creators of our circumstances, and the reason we continue to reincarnate over and over again is because we feel we have not yet mastered the knowing how to give the correct value to each one of our lives' experiences. I certainly don't believe there are any entities, or devils of sort that force us all to reincarnate, I firmly believe we do so because of our own attachments and ideas of unfulfillment, of all what we think we have left undone. So. Once more, learning to let go, to forgive others and especially ourselves, and to appreciate what we have, and who we have, all in gratitude, brings us closer to not needing to repeat yet another incarnation, or at least would help us prevent repeating the same last one, giving us the opportunity to move on. Another factor that I feel also makes us come back into the physical, is the need to feel that we can create a wonderful life despite any hardship or unwanted experiences, a life we would want to repeat, only with variations perhaps, or to learn to create countless different positive and fabulous lifetimes, full of contrasts and spiritual growth. And with it, being able to synchronize the meaning of life our souls may have from the physical point of view and from the spirit side's point of view as well. The more we can synchronize our values congruently, the more whole we can become as beings, and the more control we can have over our lives. What are we alive for? Perhaps it is to learn to be happy despite everything else, perhaps even dissolving all negativity as it is only an interpretation that changes as we see it from different angles. Seeing life as something hard, as it is hard no matter who, and where you are, as I see it, life is about staying alive as long as you can, and as well as you can, perhaps even seeing it as if life were a game where the whole point is to see how long you can last there, how hard are you to kill. And one of the keys is to persevere, to march on no matter what, to insist in what you want and need, and never give up. And then perhaps, as souls, we can finally come to see that being in the spirit world, or in the physical side is all the same, being that contrast is only another expression of duality, and only an interpretation, as from the most expanded point of view we all desire to attain, there is no duality between the spirit world, and the material world. There is only spirit world, the material side however compelling it may be, is only an illusion. They are both only a set of ideas, values, and interpretations in one great soup of pure consciousness. I know it hurts to be alive, it hurts here too, 
and that physical and emotional pain cannot be denied. It is a true experience, but remember it is all based on interpretations and points of view, and no matter how bad things may seem, they aren't in the end. Your life purpose is to spiritually grow to the point where you can create a heaven for yourself, wherever you are, alive or not, in spite of everything that surrounds you, that you may interpret as blocking, or not letting you achieve that state. The experiences, the good ones and the bad ones, are what you are looking for when you decided to incarnate. Don't be so hard on yourself, remember the toughest judge is yourself. Be kind to others, and be kind to yourself, but always take care of yourselves. With much love. Marie Soiroux